Today's video is all about energy vampires, and we may intuitively understand what that sounds like and what it means to us, but today we have some concrete examples on how to identify an energy vampire in the flesh and pull out that onion clove and <laughs> ward them away. So when I think of an energy vampire, I think of people when they talk to you or when you have interaction with them and then they leave and you feel tired as hell. Or you just feel like drained. Like one time I went to the nail salon and after these people were done touching me, I had a panic attack in my car. That was an energy vampire I felt like. Like you have a small little, it can be a small or a big reaction. Afterwards you just feel like a humongous energy shift and it's mostly negative. That's how you know it's an energy vampire. So you notice it after or is this something that you can notice in the moment? In the moment, you kind of, like, get that gut feeling, like, mm, something's a little off. But, you know, you don't really think too much about it. But after the interaction, you're, like, by yourself, and you just notice, like, you feel, like, drained. Or your mm. energy is, like, completely unbalanced. You just feel off. Like, I had a complete panic attack after these people this lady touched my hands. So, let's say you're at the nail salon. Is it automatically, in your eyes, the person that's, like, touching your hands? Or is it potentially someone else that's in the salon, either giving you the evil eye or listening mm. on your conversations or how do you kind of identify the specific person or people that's involved in this well you i was like mm, these people were making their energies are a little off but you know you never really know but when i left the salon i had a panic attack like being in there triggered something in me that was like maybe it, it's me but mm. i feel like certain individuals like they're thinking bad thoughts or they have like bad intentions mm. and then they touch you and that transfers mm. So Has it ever happened to you? Like you have interaction with someone and afterwards you're like, Ugh. Well, they say the vampires, the energy vampires, they need to bite your your neck to get the blood. And that's just another form of physical touch, albeit that's quite violent. But I think that's the general premise where oftentimes the physical, in this case, would be the teeth on the neck. And for your case, it could be just hand-to-hand -hand contact. Regardless, it is some kind of physical contact that... You're really opening yourself up to outside energy so we gotta be mindful of who exactly it is that's coming in either performing a service on our nails or overall just bringing their vibe onto ours there's a reason why sometimes you go to like touch someone they like back off like you black girls you try to touch your hair but like oh <laughs> it's not to be rude you just don't know what you what energy you're holding or like, mm -hmm. you know you wouldn't just walk up to a random like lady and be like ah. yeah i don't know I think that's like energy. Um, so how do you best put your shield up to protect yourself from energy vampires? Don't let people say, you know, this is my personal space. Well, actually, sometimes you just actually can't protect yourself from an energy vampire. Hmm. I don't really? know. Unless like, okay, like let's say you meditate all the time and all your fucking chakras are always open. You get around an energy vampire, you're just open mm. to them like in the mm. physical and in the astral or like whatever mm. it's called. Yeah. So it's good to meditate, but you have to know when to close certain stuff around certain people. Not everybody needs to be have complete access to you, and mm. I have to learn that. So in the meditations, is it best to open up and then close down before you go about your days? You you gotta like I guess ground yourself. Like mm. when you meditate, sometimes you feel like you're you're like a like not one. You like you know you kind of float off. If you're around an energy vampire, you're floating off, and they're. <laughs> mm -hmm. they're gonna just grab at you right mm -hmm. so i feel like you have to know when to ground yourself mm. um around yeah. certain people you can feel it when you're talking to someone and you're being like vampired almost you ever feel like that like um, your energy kind of is feeling like mm, your gut is kind of like tingling that's when you mm -hmm. know you're being energy vampired like your gut feels off you're like the more you talk to someone you're just like mm, this mm. is off like I don't yeah. know, maybe it's in my head. I don't know. Sometimes I get a similar feeling, but I tend to shift the blame onto myself to, for even either getting in that situation to where I'm vulnerable. And sometimes you don't know it. You don't know it until after the interaction. I like that idea of having to ground yourself because if we imagine our energy as like a toroidal field that goes from our crown upwards out and then up through our root, then we can understand how all this external energy is seeping in from that lower point of our bodies and whatever that means to you you got to be mindful of making sure that you're out in nature metaphorically cleansing yourself in every way possible like you can open up all your chakras 
be as spiritual as you can be. But when you get around the wrong side group and you're all, all your chakras are open, is you're giving people access to you. Like you, would, you wouldn't just like smoke with a random people, I guess. Like I, I don't like to smoke with like random people because I know it opens me up. Like you didn't want someone, I don't know. But I think like that. So opening up your chakras makes you more vulnerable to these energy vampires? Opening up your chakras is a spiritual it's a spiritual thing you are opening up your crown to your feet so if you're around a new person you need to know when to open them up and when to close them i don't know how to really close it that's why i stopped meditating because i was like oh i'm opening up myself and it's nothing wrong with like meditation i feel like Mm. opening your chakras but if you're just opened all up to everybody it's like you're gonna get drained i feel Mm. like that's why i stopped meditating because i was like "Mm, i don't really know what i'm opening and who's has access to what i'm opening so until i figure out how to ground it i'm not going to just open myself up it's interesting that you say you stop meditating for that reason because when i meditate i try to just get super comfortable with the uncomfort that is just sitting in stillness and for me that opens up my past my present my future but typically i find that it's just isolated to me and um, I don't think that experience really opens me up to anything external that's potentially unwanted. So I feel like I have to consciously, consciously press my intention into the idea of trying to open up my chakras, which that seems natural for you, but it doesn't seem very natural in my past experiences. Well, when I was doing meditation, I was like doing like spine breathing, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So like, I felt like I was so open and a lot of people would be like, Ooh, mm-hmm. I love your eyes. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like, <laughs> but like people, like you forget like you're doing this meditation, but other people can see like, oh, this person's different. Like they don't know what it is, about, you know? Mm. So you do have to like ground yourself and there's other forms of meditation. You don't have to doing like deep spinal breathing or mm-hmm. you could be doing like a workout, but you just have to ground yourself because not everybody should be open to all your chakras. That's like a deep spiritual Mm -hmm. thing between you. Today, I was at the store and I was waiting in line. And since it was Black Friday, it was very crowded in the checkout line. I stood there just connecting my fingertips to each other and breathing as you described through my spine. And I wasn't making noise or anything like that to really draw attention, but everyone in line that was like in my immediate surroundings I could feel their energy shifting into me from a place of judgment. Well, yeah. Judgment or you felt like just be like off energy? I'm Maybe I was harsh to say judgment. It's almost like I felt their energy coming in. And the fact that there was just another energy besides my own, that kind of threw me off. Exactly. That's why you need to ground. If you're going to be opening up your chakras, doing a whole bunch of spiritual stuff, you need to know when to ground yourself too. You don't want to just be floating all like floating up and then people just like That's what I think the ultimate issue is like really identifying why it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. Like standing in line, putting my hands like that and breathing to draw the attention of others or was this truly just to make myself feel better or to distract myself? I think in my eyes grounding is remaining true to my original foundational intention which typically is being able to connect within so that I can leave so that I can live my best life well you can if you're going to be like spiritually breathing and opening up your chakras form like a protective bubble around yourself Mm. or like imagine it like you're forming something Mm -hmm. impenetrable I don't know I need to do that myself So we'll conclude with some options of protection. And my personal favorite is simply to do that toroidal breathing where I imagine the actual like breath be like kind of guiding the light within. And if I can make that full circuit from in to external, from the crown out through the root and back in again, and complete that full loop in all directions of my body, then I'm pretty much protected. And then beyond that, I like the Merkaba meditation. I took some (laughs) shrooms. (laughs) <laughs> and I like I was in this meditation where you imagine like a really long tube shooting out you're inside of the tube though and you can like lock the top of the tube and then the bottom of the mm. tube and this keeps you like kind of protected mm. that, from the siphoners that reminds me of this idea that I've been playing around with is 
like we have these like seven chakras and I imagine that there's in reality probably way more than just seven but they're like above our heads or maybe below our feet and like this is just where we're at in terms of our progression it's like a, a video game that just kind of shows us where we're at in the infinite scale that is the chakra pro- like energetic progression you like we have more than seven chakras like there's more like that go mm-hmm. past the crown and whatnot who knows i need what you're smoking <laughs> well that's everything i'm here to share and i'm here with Syrah. <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you.